Hello everyone, again, welcome to a weekly edition of Wrestling News with the Dude. Well, technically, this is another back-to-back -back episode of Wrestling News with the Dude. So, there you have it. As usual, I'll be talking about some news and I will give my thoughts about it. So, first things first, as usual, obviously, GTS Wrestling, Sucker Slam. So, yesterday what happened is that we had two matches. We had Hollywood Hooligan versus Tommy Salami. This match was pretty alright until Grimm decided to ruin the match and Hollywood Hooligan gets the victory due to an outside interference. And once again, Tommy Salami is gone. Again. Does that mean that he's gonna be gone from GTS for good or will we see him again probably at the Regal Rumble 2020? Who knows, cause we're probably going to see Grimm vs Tommy Slami feud once again. And we had a fatal 4-way for the GTS Championship. However, this was an elimination match, so Ace Hitman Jones and Shamar were eliminated first at the same time. And then we had a... oh man. Is Joe Dice is trying to be the next Damien Sandow or Charlie Haas? Cause I bet for sure that this time he was uh, Momen Reigns. Moment Reigns. Last time he was The Undertaker. What's next? Joe Cena? Anyways, I as I predicted correctly, Onslaught is your winner and he is still your GTS Champion. But hey, I actually enjoy Grimm as a heel commentator, but I hope he's not annoying as Michael Cole from 2011. Because remember when Michael Cole was a heel commentator from 2011? Yeah, me neither. And there are more matches to come at Sucker Slam today and probably tomorrow as well. Switching gears to New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 29. And this is the last time we will see the B Block. So we had Jeff Cobb taking on Toriano in a comedic match. Unfortunately, Jeff Cobb gets a two point and there's no way he's going to the finals. And same goes for Taichi, who got a 2 point from Tomohiro Ishii. However, he's going to get a title shot for the Never Open Way Championship, which will probably happen next month at the Destruction. Same goes for Juice Robinson, who actually beat John Moxley in a single match for the G1 Climax Tournament, and we would have thought that John Moxley was going to make it a finals, but nope! Juice Robinson beats John Moxley and he will get his title shot for the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship probably at either Destruction or King of Pro Wrestling. And then we got a semi main event Hiroki Goto vs Shingo Takagi and of course Shingo Takagi gets a 2 point. Next the main event Jay White vs Tetsuya Naito. How many stars will Dave Meltzer rate this? And I knew that I wasn't wrong. He will move on to the finals and he will face Kota Ibushi who won the A Block Tournament. So, who's gonna win? Kota Ibushi or Jay White? My money goes to Jay White because we're probably going to see a rematch between Jay White and Kazuchika Okada at Wrestle Kingdom. But, I would love to see Kota Ibushi versus Kazuchika Okada again, but it already happened at the G1, so it will most likely going to happen at King of Pro Wrestling where Kazuchika will defend the IWGP Heavyweight title and he'll probably going to defend his IWGP Heavyweight title against Sonata at Destruction. It's obviously that we will see Jay White versus Kazuchika Okada once again because the last time these two faced each other was at the G1 Super Card from Madison Square Garden. So how would you predict the winner of the G1 Climax? Well, it has to be someone who's from a different block. Example like last year at the G1 Climax 28, Kenny Omega was from the B block while Hiroshi Tanahashi was from the A block. So. We would have saw this one coming as Kota Ibushi already beats Kazuchika Okada and obviously we will see these two again probably in the next two months. However, Jay White is from the different block so this is probably predictable that you would see a top guy from a different block will face the 
IWGP Heavyweight Champion at Wrestle Kingdom. So, yeah, we're probably going to see Jay White versus Kazuchika Okada in a rematch once again at Wrestle Kingdom 14. I could be wrong, who knows, but if Ibushi actually wins, congrats to him. But hey, Hiroshi Tanahashi is probably going to face Chris Jericho at Wrestle Kingdom 14. Switching gears to NXT TakeOver Toronto results. So this happened at Toronto for a second time. Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford defeated the Undisputed Era, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish to retain their NXT Tag Team Championship. And I would have thought that they would have lose their titles because they're on the main roster. However, they're actually going to stick around with NXT for a bit. And next we have Iro Shirai versus Candice LeRae. And this was an, well, probably an okay or decent match in my opinion. However, Iro Shirai won by a technical submission. Next, what a great triple threat match with these three great wrestlers. Velveteen Dream retains the NXT North American Championship. And then we had some impromptu segment by Matt Riddle who was not even booked for NXT TakeOver Toronto. But then he got his ass whooped by Killian Dane. Shayna Baszler defeated Maya Yim by a submission and she is still the NXT Women's Championship. Surprisingly she won without any help or any interference. And also what a main event. The 2 out of 3 falls match for the NXT Championship. Each of the falls have different stipulation. The first fall was a single match. Adam Cole won by a disqualification because Johnny Gargano used a steel chair to get disqualified. The second fall was a street fight. Johnny Gargano won that fall. And then the third fall was a barbed wire steel cage match surrounded by several weapons. Yeah, this stipulation was chosen by the NXT general manager William Regal. And yeah, Adam Cole won the third round after he and Johnny fall off through the tables from the cage. And what an epic match by the way. I wonder how many stars will Dave Meltzer rate this match. Speaking of NXT, NXT will be moving to Fox Sports 1, which means that someone from WWE will most likely going to be involved with WWE's developmental show. And you guessed it. Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn are most likely going to be involved with WWE's developmental brand which none of us would want that to happen because Triple H is the big brain for NXT. Nobody wants Vince McMahon or Kevin Dunn get involved with WWE's developmental show especially NXT UK. Because you see that there are some great talents from the NXT roster and we don't want that to be ruined by some guys going to push the big wrestlers to the top and have the small wrestlers look like a jobber. So please stay away from that brand because nobody wants that to happen because NXT is a great show and nobody is going to ruin it. Otherwise, most of subscribers will unsubscribe the WWE Network all thanks to Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn. And by the way, Vince McMahon should really focus on uh, XFL, whatever it is, I don't care. But please, stay away from NXT and focus on the WWE's main roster show and XFL or otherwise, please step down from being a CEO and let Triple H do a better job for us. So that's all I got for right now. I hope you all enjoy GTS Sucker Slam, G1 Climax 29, and WWE SummerSlam. So with that being said, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe for more content. Tap that little bell so you don't want to miss an upload. As always, peace and good day.